As some of you may know, Oxford, home of the English Dictionary's Word of the Year in 2022, was goblin mode. And for some people, the act of becoming more goblin-like was probably a phase that they had during the 2020 lockdown, where they would wear their comfy night-night clothing for three consecutive work days in a row without changing it and attending all meetings in that attire, and feasted on a diet of comfy soup with very, very buttery bread. But for me, goblin mode is a full-time lifestyle. You've probably noticed this by now, but goblins are my favourite faction in any given sci-fi or fantasy setting, and I have spent years of my life and hours of my time dedicated to elaborately painting up the little guys wherever I can find them. I've painted them big and small and wide and tall and cute and also kind of ugly looking and everything in between. I even recently and very unexpectedly launched an entire goblin goblin-based miniature range of my own so I could paint even bigger goblins of my own creation and then send them to you all over the world and then take over the world with my goblins, maybe. But after all of this time and after all of these goblins, I've kind of realized something. And that's that I've never really pushed myself outside of my comfort zone when it comes to painting these little guys. They're always so green, always with their little red mushrooms and always that classic green to blue fade on their clothes that I always end up falling back on. Well, I think it's about time that we change that. And in order to do so, I am going to dive into the unknown, break the goblin mode mold and really push my painting skills in order to make the world's weirdest looking goblin. Whoosh. So first things first, who will be the subject of my little experiment today? Will it be a gloom spike git, or maybe a classic 40k grot, or even an unsuspecting little cloth goblin? Well, none of those guys actually, because I have something brand new to show you. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you the newest Rascal Town goblin, RH003. He is a night goblin off duty from the Rascal Town dungeons, and he is a heavily armoured adorable little powerhouse and he might be my favourite miniature that we've done yet but don't tell the others. He has a big spiky club, loads of details like mushrooms and arrows and dangly little gobliny bits and he even stumbled upon a little wizard frog who seems to be putting on a bit of a show for him. So this is the miniature that I am going to be painting in this video and if you like you can paint your own as well because he is going to be available for you guys to purchase at as of this video going live, so right now. <laughs> you can grab him, the other two rascals, and also this incredible t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, which I wanna show you, cause it's like hand tie-dyed hand tie-dyed rainbow warrior themed. You can get those shirts and the goblins at roguehobbies.com. Yeah, you can buy it, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, the paint job that I'm about to do in this video is hopefully gonna become the official box art paint job for this entire miniature. And that's very important from like a marketing perspective. So no pressure to me, I guess. It's a lot of pressure actually, I'm quite scared. <laughs> on top of me trying to produce a box art quality paint job on a brand new miniature, I am going to be pushing myself fully out of my comfort zone by also using using a completely different paint range to my usual Citadel Plus special guest collection. And for that, we are going to be using 100% Pro Acryl. I'd heard some really awesome things about Pro Acryl and how good and how super thin but matte and pigmented their paints were, but I hadn't really tried them until recently when I picked up their white paint and oh my god, it was like the best paint I've ever tried in my life and I was like, hooked. Like, I don't know what they're putting in those paints, but it is nice. And whilst this video is not sponsored by Pro Acryl, it was totally my idea to make it a 100% Pro Acryl goblin.
goblin and if they don't want a goblin video then that's tough luck they're getting one anyway once they had gotten wind that i had tried out some of their paints and i was a huge fan they were kind enough to send me their entire paint range and look you can see them they're so pretty I love them, thank you. Which is obviously incredible and I feel very humbled and excited because there is just a huge range of colours in their collection. I didn't know they had so many. But now what that means is that I get to show off this range to you. And if in doing so you see a paint I'm using and you really like it and you buy it and then you discover that it's your new favourite paint in the world, then I'll feel like I've done something pretty good for the community. So a brand new Goblin miniature and a brand new range of paints for me to experiment with. All that's left to do is for me to come up with a brand new take on the classic goblin colour scheme. And then paint him, obviously. <laughs> Take a moment to imagine a perfect little goblin in your head. Firstly, say hello to your new mind goblin, and secondly, he's probably green, right? We've all grown up in a world of green goblins and goblin green, so that adds up. And that's reflected in the way that I think most of us paint our goblins. Me especially, I have always painted them very bright yellowy greens with little orangey red noses to add a little bit of warmth and contrast to my miniatures. So I guess a good place to start if we're making the world's weirdest and most different looking goblin is just to take all of that and chuck it out the window and make our goblin the opposite of green, so we're gonna make him purple. And my thought process for this is kind of threefold. Firstly, and most simply, if you look at a colour wheel, the opposite of yellowy, gobliny green is purple, so that feels like a good place to start. And when you google purple goblin, the results are surprisingly very, very limited, which means that I may actually be onto something new here, which is very exciting. And thirdly, I just think that spooky and cool toned blues and purples will really really suit this miniature super well and will maybe accentuate some of his more nighttime spooky goblin-y themes. And I know this for a fact because I'm secretly basing my plans for the official paint job on a prototype Rascaltown Goblin which my friend Bill from Berserker Works painted ages and ages ago when he came over to visit. I love the conversion he did and the paint job looks so cool and different and I love the little cobblestone base he gave the miniature so a huge thank you to Bill for the big inspiration and for helping me make the first steps on this project. But unfortunately, whilst I think a purple goblin in theory will look really cool, purple is not my favourite colour to paint. So I may be setting myself up for a disaster here, but nonetheless I am committed to the bit and we are going to crack on and paint ourselves a purple goblin. not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous starting this very important miniature with one of my least favourite colours in an area which is kind of the dominant part of the whole miniature. I've painted regular green goblins so many times that I pretty much know exactly what paints to use and in what order without really having to think about it, but I've hardly painted any purple in my life, let alone the smooth purpley pink skin tone that I had in mind for this miniature. But after I got past the base coat, which always takes forever, I got all excited and inspired by the new realm of possibility on this goblin and all of the new paints and all of the new colours and I started to go super hard on those blends. I decided that it wouldn't really be a me style goblin if I didn't give it a big red nose and a little pink tummy, but instead of going for my usual warm reds, I went for a more magical purpley magenta -y pink, which I wet blended like I I usually do with my base coat into the ends of his nose and the middle of his cute little belly. Then, and this may blow your mind, I completely skipped over the Citadel washes and shades. Just chucked out the window. This is something I feel really inspired to make an entire video about soon because I think it's really important, but recently I have been trying to unlearn the way I was taught to paint and the way that I have painted for years. The Citadel painting system is how most people I know were taught to paint and how a lot of people still paint today, and the system is essentially the classic base coat the miniature, give it a wash, then give it a highlight technique. But honestly, these days I'm finding that that way 
of painting my miniatures is just so inefficient. Why, when I've spent ages laying down this lovely, smooth, well-blended base coat, would I cover it with an all-over, pretty, uncontrollable washer shade, wait for it to dry, and then do my best to try and bring out the brightness again with even more layers, which would probably just start with my original base colour anyway? When I could just save myself time and give myself more control over the miniature's finish by just applying some controlled recess shades with some darker colours only where I think I need to, and then everything else that I've already painted is super smooth and blended and ready for me to highlight. But saying that, maybe I don't even need to edge highlight. What? Oh my god, she's crazy. The nose here, for example, is a pretty big, round, protruding shape on this little guy's face, and honestly it's a bit of a focal point for the whole miniature, but it's also kind of hard to work out how I should elaborately edge highlight it, so I kind of just didn't. I made a super nice gradient, layered up a few simple lighter tones into the higher areas, and then I put a little purpley pink single highlight right at the top, and that was it. And I did the same for the stomach area too. I spent loads of time on the skin making it the blendiest and smoothest paint job that I possibly could, and by not using shades and washes, not only was the end result consistently very matte and smooth because I was using all of the same paints that had the same finish, but it also took me much less time than if I was to use washes or shades and highlight it back up from being quite dark. But most importantly, I am super happy with the result, surprisingly, and I feel like this is a great start to my weird purple goblin project. <laughs> With the skin all done, it was time for me to move on to the next most dominant part of the miniature, which is all of those metallic armour elements. And at this point, it kind of felt like this mini was the Things I Hate Painting video part 2. And unfortunately, it started off about as well as you'd imagine if you're like me and you don't have a lot of confidence in me. I spent ages and ages layering up some boring toned greys in the hopes that it would turn out at least kind of smooth and clean in the end, but it was just meh. It didn't really read as metallic and it was just a whole lot of boringly grey painted grey and that was definitely not the vibe of this little guy. So I decided it was time to push myself once again and use a weapon in my arsenal that I very rarely use and go absolutely ham with some glazes. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good glaze, but usually I use things like contrast paint to just darken an area of a miniature down or to tint to paint job into a slightly different colour, but I have seen people basically paint entire miniatures using thin glazes and it looks amazing, so I was hoping that I could do the same to save my metallic paint job from its weird boring grey cryo sleep. And I'm happy to say that I think it really worked. I mixed up some blue and purple and green glazes and I went a little bit experimental all over the metal features. Trying to channel my inner expressive artist, I applied the glazes pretty sporadically in super duper thin layers into some of the recesses to make them look a bit more contrasty, and in thin layers in the lighter areas to make the metals look like they were maybe reflecting something or somewhere a bit more magical. Then I thinned down some bright saturated oranges and I added a bunch of rusty streaks to all the little screws and rivets which added even more colour and interest to my metallics. This is definitely not how I usually attempt to do non-metallic metallics, and I have definitely never tried to do it on such a big miniature and such big spaces in my life. And am I 100% happy with the result? Well, no, not 100%, because it's not the most perfectly well-painted, smoothest and most contrasty non-metallic paint job in the world. But I still think that it's good, and I think that it suits the miniature, and most importantly, Importantly, I think that every single time I push myself and I try to do non-metallics, I end up learning something new. And that's all I can ask for, really.
the rest of the miniature, I'm pleased to say, didn't really give me any trouble. I decided to stick to my cool new colour scheme guns and not fall back on any of my usual comfort colours, and opt for an almost more desaturated toned miniature, which was actually really good fun, and this little raggedy skirt ended up looking colourful, but not in a bright and saturated way, which is perfect for his dungeony nighttime nature. But obviously, I always save the best bit for last, and that is the mushrooms. Mushrooms are always my favourite thing to paint on goblins, because they're little excuses to experiment with colours and patterns and blends, and I always love doing them every single time. Obviously, since this goblin is nighttime themed, my first thought was, cool, I'm gonna do some glowy, object source lighting style mushrooms, but I've kind of already done that before on other miniatures, and as part of this challenge, I need to push myself to do something new. With my Pro Acryl paints, I also got sent some brand new fluorescent paints, which was really exciting because I love to use fluorescent paints in my day-to-day -day painting, but for this miniature, I decided that I would use the fluorescent paints in a different way to show off their secret ability. Fluorescent paints are fun and bright enough under normal light sources, but if you turn off the lights and pop on a black light, then these bad boys turn into an entire rave. And what better way to demonstrate that this goblin is from a dark dungeon full of magical glowing mushrooms than to paint the mushrooms using black light reactive fluorescent paints. Usually they're more like very, very bright glazes, which whilst not being actual glow in the dark, really pack a punch under things like my black light torch here. So I thought that I could do something cool here and make two paint jobs, with one of them being the secret paint job, which is only visible using my torch. To do that, I started by painting them up normally, with the main one at the top being a glowy green colour to hint to its secret purpose, and the rest being whatever fun little magical colour I wanted. Then after that, I went in with the fluorescent paints, and I found that the yellow yellow and the green were the brightest under the black light, so I started to glaze in some greeny yellows underneath the mushroom's cap to make it look like it was glowing from within when it was lit under the special torch, and then I went around dotting all of the little tubes with some more tiny dots of the fluorescent paint. These glazes and dots aren't really visible under normal light, they kind of just add a little bit more saturation to the piece, but then you turn on your black light torch and BAM! You have an actual secret glowy hidden mushroom paint job on your miniature. I absolutely love how this effect turned out, I think it's so cool that he has like a secret hidden glowy second paint job on him, and I'm definitely going to be implementing this style and technique into more of my miniatures in the future, now that I've worked out how effective I can make it. After I had finished off the rest of the miniature, including his adorable little magical frog, which is probably secretly the best part of the miniature, but whatever, we're just gonna glaze over it for now, it was time for me to move on to the base, and as usual, I was not looking forward to this step, because basing is not my forte, but fortunately for me, I had a little bit of extra inspiration. I love the very simple little cobblestone base that Bill did on his Rascal Town Goblin, so I decided decided I would kind of riff on that and make my own. The process for making the cobblestone base was actually super simple. I just made some little Millie Pup balls and I smushed them into my base until they were flat little cobblestone shapes, and then I used an old brush to smooth them down and separate them out and shape them just a little bit more. When they were dry and primed, I did a lot of back and forth with my colourful stone tones, and I ended up trying to make it look a lot more natural and grassy and dirty by putting some sterling mud in between the stones, which was a little bit gross looking, and I probably wouldn't have done that if I could go back in time, but in the name of exploration, I persevered, and I kept on building up my thin layers of paints in a very natural, washy style, with just a few edge highlights here and there to make the individual stones stand out. Then I finally attached the miniature to its base, added some tufts and little flowers, which really help to hide some of the more messy bits of the base, and it made the whole thing come together really nicely. And now all that's left to do is to take this guy to the photography studio so he can officially become the next Rascal Town Goblin. Yay. Dance, 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 the goblin dance, the goblin dance, it's the goblin dance. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. 
And here he is in all of his purple glowy glory. R8003 is complete and the packaging is all done and he is amazingly ready to ship out all over the world right now. And even though this whole video was a bit of a risk, I think he turned out fantastic. And I'm pleased to say that he definitely looks like no other goblin I have ever painted, which after so long painting the same green colored little guys feels like a real step forward forward for me. If like me you struggle with feelings of plateauing as a miniature painter or you have just been painting the same miniatures in the same way for years and years and you want to push yourself and break free of some old habits then I really recommend doing what I have done in this video. Try picking up a miniature that's familiar and comfy to you but then try doing something completely new with it like use a brand new paint range that you've never tried before or make the miniature actually actually glow, or even just make it a weird colour scheme that you'd have never thought of doing before. And you may rediscover why you fell in love with that faction in the first place. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. As usual, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for being rogues, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye!